On this episode of Doing the Most, we're gonna do a quick primer on glycerin. In the last two weeks episodes, you have seen me include a substance called glycerin in both our coffee mead and our sparkleberry hard seltzer. And potentially that's led you to question what the heck is glycerin and why am I putting it in my home brews? In essence, glycerin is a sugar alcohol, just like erythritol or xylitol, other things that you may have used in home brewing. And glycerin, also called glycerol, is a byproduct of fermentation and I'll put some recommendations on the screen here for yeasts that are great at creating it. However, you can find food grade glycerin slash glycerol and you can use it in your home brewing to add a little bit more of the effect that glycerin brings. Commercially, glycerin is usually made by heating vegetable fats with something that is alkali to cause the glycerin to separate out and bond with water and form kind of a sweet syrupy substance. And as long as your glycerin is like 98.5% plus glycerin, which often you can find 100% glycerin, that is considered food safe and usually it'll say food safe on the label. So what does glycerin do? Well, as I mentioned, it is a sweetener, but it is a very mild sweetener. And you may have seen it before in your local homebrew shop labeled as wine finishing solution. And generally the label will just be glycerin. Uh, but it is something that is added, uh, particularly like for wines, at a rate of about one ounce per gallon to finish and sweeten lightly the wine. And mainly what it does is it gives a more whole mouthfeel. There are some things you can add to wine or mead to enhance the mouthfeel, like tannins or oak, but glycerin does it in a different way. It's more of a mouth coating viscosity sensation, similar to adding honey to a mead. So say for example, you have a mead that you have back sweetened with honey and the flavor profile is perfect, but the balance of the viscosity is slightly off. A very small amount of glycerin might be all you need to add in that heft of mouthfeel without changing much at all about the sweetness. I've used glycerin in distilled products, I've used it in wines and meads, and I love the effect that it brings with just a little bit. So for example, in both our coffee mead recipe and our hard seltzer recipe, we are adding three ounces to about five gallons worth of product. Not very much at all, three little shot glasses full, but it's enough to give that effect. Now, if you go overboard, which I have, it can lead to a little bit of a greasiness in the mouthfeel. So you do have to be careful and I'll put up here on the screen some of my general recommendations for how much per gallon, depending on the product that you're making. And as you can see, it kind of varies, especially based on sweetness level and alcohol content. There's no real science to it. At least I haven't developed any real science to it. And if somebody comes up with some science, I'll be happy to make another video about that. Maybe it might be a good thing to calculate into mead tools, for example. Mead tools? Yeah, you listening? But I have really enjoyed playing with this as an ingredient over the last couple of years and kind of figuring out how to work it into my workflow. And a lot of you who are on the Discord have probably seen me talking about it here and there. And like I said, this is just kind of a primer video because I keep talking about it and I really wanted a video on the topic that I can link to when people have questions about glycerin or glycerol. They're essentially the same compound. Glycerin can be bought typically at your local homebrew shop. Like I said, it's usually labeled as wine finishing solution, but you can also get it on Amazon. And I'll put some links in the description to glycerins that I have used. Now, links benefit the channel, but they are ones I have used so I can verify that they indeed worked out well. Do you need to add glycerin to your brew? Probably not. Usually, I've made many wines and meads where I haven't felt the need for that added viscosity, but in that triforce of balance, trying to build out the best flavor profile and mouthfeel and tannin profile you can in your home brewing, glycerin might be the tool in your tool belt that you need 
for some extenuating circumstances or some recipes where you want that viscosity but you don't want too much sweetness. And like I said, there are some yeasts that are really good at producing it, and generally how you perceive that sensation is perceived sweetness without really any sweetness being reflected in hydrometer readings. And a good example that I've recommended lots of times, including in my video about how I make my favorite traditional mead, I use Kvike Lutra, which is a Kvike yeast that leaves a perceptible sweetness without any added gravity. And the speculation, obviously, is that it's a glycerol production in that yeast. But again, there are other yeasts that do it as well. All yeast should create some level of glycerin during fermentation. And there are some commercial strains you can get that will do that without necessarily having to add it yourself. Oh, hi there. BC here, editing the video you're watching now. As I'm editing this, I'm realizing that some of you are going to want a little bit more of a deep dive into the science of glycerin and yeast. So let's take a look at it real quick, and then we'll get back to the rest of the video. Glycerol is a non-volatile compound with the chemical formula C3H8O3, and it is the most abundant byproduct of alcoholic fermentation after ethanol and carbon dioxide that is produced by yeast during the fermentation process. The production of glycerol helps yeast to balance osmotic pressure in high sugar environments, such as a grape must or mead must, and it helps it maintain the oxidation reduction balance within the cell. This is crucial for the cell survival and efficient fermentation. In high sugar environments like mead and grape musts, yeast cells face osmotic pressure, where water moves out of the cell, potentially causing dehydration. To counter this, yeast synthesize glycerol, which helps balance the osmotic pressure between the inside and the outside of the cell. Additionally, glycerol production plays a vital role in maintaining the intracellular redox balance, which is the equilibrium between oxidized and reduced forms of molecules within a cell, and it is crucial for maintaining cellular function and metabolism. So glycerol production is a critical adaptation that allows yeast to survive and thrive in the inhospitable environment of a high osmotic pressure fermentation. Make sense? Great. Let's get back to the video. If you like this video, consider leaving a super thanks, or at the very least, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content from doing the most. And I would recommend you join our Discord server. It's a great place to hang out. And if you have been on it for any number of years, you've probably seen me talking about glycerin there. And so you've got some spoilers ahead of time. Until next time, happy brewing and cheers. Moment brews and berries are tunes, everything from meat to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most.